How's it going traders? It's the Pup of Wall Street back with another weekend review. Today we're going to look at my top 11 charts going into next week as well as a few updates from the previous week's charts. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below so you can get these actionable trade ideas as soon as they come out. And if you can, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about these videos. Also, feel free to level up and watch these videos on 1.25 or 1.5x if you feel like I'm talking too slow. So let's dig into the charts. And uh, first one up we're going to talk about is Bros, B-R-O-S. This is a coffee company. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, you can see that we had a descending channel here and uh, wave A, B. C correction, right? So A, B, C. And uh, now we have potentially a one, two, three setup. This could be a one, two right here, right? So one, two, one, two. So what I'd be watching for here is either a pullback retest of this anchored VWAP, which is anchored right to the IPO candle. Uh, and again, we're on the daily chart. So that would be one way I would enter the chart. Uh, you also have a nice demand zone right here. So that really looks pretty good as far as a back test on that anchored VWAP. And you could see it's acting as resistance here, here, and all the way back here. We finally got that breakout. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you get that breakout and you get the retest and the bounce. Um, so that's what I would be watching for. The other way you could look at this is the break over the 50% retracement. And so when I do my fib retracements, I look at the previous swing high and the previous swing low, and I do my, my fib retracements for that, that pullback. And then what I generally look at to the upside, and I don't have it here, but you'll have a, a 382, you'll have a 236, and that's your 100% retrace right down there. And so right now you could see we came right into that 50% retrace and we saw resistance almost perfectly on that candle right there. So that was about four days ago. So the other way to look at this is on a breakout trade over 59.71. But keep in mind that, you know, we're in earnings season, so there's going to be a lot of volatility. And breakout trades are failing more often than not right now at this time in the market. So you just want to be careful with breakout trades. I much prefer to be a pullback trader here than a breakout trader. Uh, so that is bros. Let's look at our next name, which is CTVA. So this is a new name here. We have a cup, we have a handle, and we have a cup and handle breakout right here. You can see previous resistance on $50 right back here. Uh, we came close to it here, but got rejected, uh, lower high, and now a higher low, and now another higher, um, excuse me, higher high, and another higher high. So we did get our breakout here at 50, but it's really only, you know, 36 cents over. What I would watch for, again, similar to last play, watch for the bounce, watch for the back test and bounce. I call this the BRB. It's like the B right back, but it's the breakout retest bounce. That's what I'm looking for. Ultimately, I feel like if we hold 50, you know, this week, maybe early this week, then I would be testing our targeting 52.68, which is our 1272 extension off of this high and that low. And then the 1618 extension at 55.99. So uh, I didn't do a measured move off of the cup and handle, but if this does break out and we get to that 1618, then I'll add in a measured move uh, off of that play. All right, next up is uh, ticker CF. Uh, this is CF Industries. They are an agricultural fer uh, fertilizer manufacturer and distributor. You can see we have a nice, uh, <laughs> that's that's not the right, like, there we go. Nice channel to the upside. It's making a series of higher lows, higher lows, higher highs, higher highs. And now we're at a flat top here. So we did break out relative this to this previous high uh, over 74.77. So uh, I'd be watching for that level to hold. And the targets will be 77.95 and then 81.99 to the upside. And again, if we have that channel drawn out, you can see we'll probably hit that top of the channel right at that 618. So $82 makes a lot of sense for the move here. So that's CF. Next up is uh, CFLT. This is Confluent. Uh, so this is another one. Uh, IPO anchored VWAP here. You can see we just recaptured it here. 
Um, this isn't a descending triangle, but this is the 618 retracement from that swing low to that swing high. And so when we have a move up like this, and to me this looks very much like, like a one, two, three, four, five in our potential wave one, and now we have an A, B, C retracement. So what I'd be watching for is a break over 69.41 or a back test and hold of 59.61. Uh, this is, I'm looking at this a little more longer term. Uh, so this isn't necessarily like a swing trade or a day trade, but I'm looking for an ideal entry for a longer term trade over 69.41. Again, so that's CFLT. Next up is Datadog, ticker DDOG. So I've been watching Datadog for quite some time now, and uh, we had a beautiful back test right into that 200 SMA here on the daily chart. And again, another A, B, C retracement, and potentially a one, two setup. So I really like this trade. Now, obviously I wanna see this over 150. We're over, we closed at 150.31, but you could see we had some upper wicks here. So selling pressure is trying to push us down. But as we anchor to our previous swing low, you can see we're in a pretty good demand zone right here. And so once we start to clear this demand zone, we should start testing 159 to 169. That's going to be my target on this particular trade. Now, we do have a declining 50 simple moving average. So that is going to act as potential resistance or an area of interest that I'm going to be watching. But ultimately, I think we get up to 169, 170. I think that's going to be the ultimate test. Then obviously over that, we have our 786 retracement at 182.55. And then over that level, I think we, we retest these previous highs right at around $200. So... Data is looking pretty good, showing some relative strength to the market. Next up is DWAC. This is the SPAC merger for the uh, Trump social media network. So um, to me, this is more of a, you know, it's, it's a risky type of, of trade. It's, it's not something that I'm going to say, you know, jump into it and you're going to get massive gains. Um, but, you know, higher low, higher low, higher low higher high, higher high. So to me, this is bullish in a market that's either going sideways or down. So in these types of markets, I'm really looking for relative strength and this chart has been showing relative strength. Now, if we look back in October, we have uh, two candle closes right below uh, 89.65. You can see this candle here closed right on it, or excuse me, uh, wicked right into it. This one also wicked through it. So what I'd be watching for is a daily close over 89.65. And again, anchored to that IPO, we have a nice demand zone that we're starting to push over. And we have stacked moving averages. So this is looking pretty good right now for a risk to reward trade. Next up is EXPE, uh, Expedia. So you can see this is a... Um, ascending triangle so flat top flat top flat top uh, higher low higher low higher low and so what i'd be watching for is a daily close over 188.15 you could see we wicked through here we wicked through there we wicked through there we opened up over that level but ultimately got rejected and closed below it so this level of 188.15 off of this previous high right here looks really good. So if we get a daily candle close over 188.15, then I'd be targeting 202 to the upside. Of course, 200 is going to be a psychological resistance level. So anywhere between 200 and 202 would be my first target. And then my second target would be that 1618 extension to the upside at 220. All right, next up is ticker MS. This is Morgan Stanley uh, Bank Play. You can see we've been making a series of lower lows. This one actually was also a lower low, and now higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. So we are seeing some strength in bank stocks, um, but ultimately what I'd be watching for is a daily close over 105.71. Now, we got an open over that and it failed. We got an open and close over that level, and then the next day we had a bearish engulfing candle. This is when the market started to decline. So we have to be careful in this 
like yellow highlighted area, even if we get that close over 105.71, possibly better to wait for over like 106.25. But banks started to show some strength in the last uh, week or two. So I'm going to be watching for basically a daily close over 106. If we get that daily close over 106 on Morgan Stanley, uh, then 111 to the at the 1272 extension to the upside would be my first target. And then my second target would be 116.43 uh, to the upside. Uh, next up is PG. This is Procter & Gamble. Uh, I have this as a 1-2-3 triangle 4 setup. So ultimately, this is going to be my target zone, but we need a daily close over 165.07. First target would be 167.84, then 171.08, and then ultimately I'm looking at 174.64. Uh, why I use this as my target zone, it is above the 1618, but below the 200% retracement level. You know, a lot of times these things aren't perfect, but basically I'm taking the swing high from here, the swing low from here, I'm projecting to the upside, and that's why I'm targeting my wave five ending here. So let's keep a close eye on Morgan Stanley, and, or excuse me, on Procter and Gamble, uh, ticker PG to the upside. Uh, next up is Snapchat. So this is a really interesting chart. We had uh, earnings last week. Uh, we sold off massively into earnings. I think it was down like 25, almost 30%. Then we had a massive bullish engulfing that next day. I think almost like 60% gain on that day. And then Friday, we kind of had a spinning top right at this downtrend line. So what, the way I see this is a one, two, three, four, five to the downside. So... What I'm watching for, can we get over this swing low anchored VWAP here right at around $40? If we can, then I would be targeting 47, 54, 61 to the upside. 61 being that 618 retracement. Now, I don't think we get there fast because we have this uh, supply zone up above. And so whenever we get into that supply zone, think about it. If buyers you know, entered snap here and they're holding then they're in a lot of pain. That They're almost down like 50% from, from buying up here. So what happens is from a psychological standpoint, when price gets back into the zone, these guys here are going to say, oh, I'm now finally break even after being down, you know, 30 to 50%. So I'm just going to cut my losses or cut my cut my trade at a, at a break even. And so what winds up happening is you get consolidation into the supply zone. So that's what I would be watching. If you're already in snap, watch for resistance in the 47 to 54 range. And of course you have $50, nice psychological resistance uh, or psychological area of interest uh, at that point there too. So keeping an eye on Snapchat to the upside. And the uh, last ticker that I'll be going over, ticker number 11 is UPS obviously a transport. So you could see back here, 219.84 has uh, been acting as resistance since we made an all-time high there. We had two wicks coming into the level there. We had a wick coming into the level there. And finally, we did break out. And so um, what I would be watching for, so you had two inside days off of that candle. Now we're moved to the downside. Um, this was a... Uh, Anchored VWAP to the breakout candle. We back tested and held it there. So I'd be watching for two things. Do we get a back test of 220 and a bounce? Or do we get a break back over this 1272 extension from that swing high to that swing low at 227? And then we have a, a larger 1272 extension at 231 from that swing high to that swing low. So this area right here is going to be contentious area, 227 to 231. So going to watch what UPS does this coming week. Now, this brings me into some previous trades that I wanted to just uh, touch back on that are uh, looking pretty good to the upside. So we had Vail, ticker V-A-L-E, uh, at a breakout entry of 1582. We did catch that right on this candle right here. And we had three days of continuation right here. So next target's gonna be 1726 to 1757. And then we have our supply zone at 1870, which is our 618 retracement. So just watch that level to the upside. Next ticker is ticker AA. This is uh, Alcoa. Uh, I did have this on a breakout of 62.58. We got that exactly there with one day of continuation. My target's going to be 67.82 and possibly 
7361, depending on how quickly this moves, because we have a broadening formation. So with the broadening formation, we have a series of lower lows and a series of higher highs. And so you get this broadening formation here. Uh, and so generally you get five touches. So you have one, two, three, four, and I'm looking for that fifth touch somewhere up here. And again, this could move slow. And so the slower it moves, the more chance we have, I think, for it to move up to the 7361 level. So just watch that if you did enter the trade. And then last but not least is Raytheon, ticker RTX. I did have a break out entry over 92, excuse me, 9234. And we did just break out uh, on Thursday, spinning top, but held that level on Friday. And why I like this trade, uh, it is a defense contractor and there's a lot of noise right now in Eastern Europe. And of course, don't want to see anything uh, come of it. But if something does, then defense contractors tend to move in in times of, of turmoil. So don't want to see war, don't want to see conflict, but we have to look at the market objectively and understand where money is going to flow based on you know macro events. So that is my weekend review. Again, that's 11 charts with three stock reviews. Uh, please, again, if you can, like and subscribe to my channel like this chart or excuse me like this uh, video subscribe to my channel if you found this informative and if you can please leave a comment below uh, it really does help with the algorithm so thank you again for being with me here on Sunday good luck in the markets next week and uh, I'll see you out there